Hello everyone, this is the next something there for handcrafts. And as you can see, I am finally back to knitting. So uh try to ignore the dolls in the background looking positively insane because that's what dolls do. Now I like to knit most things when they're in pairs. Well actually most things pair. I like to knit most things on my circular knitting needles. And for the most part, whenever I'm knitting something like a sock or mitten or that kind of stuff, I like to knit things in the round when it is possible. So instead of double pointed needles, I like to use circular knitting needles. And I'm that kind of person who does everything two at a time. Uh, for my socks, I like two at a time toe up. For the mittens and uh, anything else where you have a pair, uh, like leg warmers or something like that, I like to do things two at a time. So they say that when you knit two at a time, that something that you make is, I think it was like 15% faster when you do it two at a time. And of course, it eliminates uh, second sock syndrome, which I would definitely suffer from if I knit them one at a time. So at some point I figured, hey, if two at a time is better, then four at a time is best. And so I worked out a little way to do four at a time. Now, um, the cast on for four at a time is a little time consuming. And uh, as usual, I started the project and then thought I would say something about it. So I'm not showing you the cast on for this particular project, but I will start another one to talk about the cast on, but I'll just give you a little brief overview. Okay, first of all, for my cast ons, most of the time, I don't want to say all the time, most of the time I use a long tail cast on, especially with socks, when I was hand knitting socks. And um, the thing about the long tail cast on is, of course, it does leave a tail. So sometimes if the yarn is uh, something in particular, I may not have a great deal of, then I will use a thumb cast on. But most of the time it's a long tail cast on. When you do the long tail cast on and you are doing two at a time, what happens is on the needle is you would cast a, well, what I normally do for the first sock or the first uh, mitten is I would cast on all of the stitches for the cast on. And then I would do split them in half and slide them, slide out the loop portion of the needle so that these would be divided. So you'll have that loop portion. And then for the second mitten or item, I would cast on one half onto the needle and then kind of stretch it and cast on the other half uh, onto the, oh, I should say pull it around. I would cast on one half onto the needle, pull it around, pull it through, and then kind of stretch and cast on the other half here. Uh, that's a little strange. And it's a cast on that does, you know, get people confused, but that's normally how it would do it. Uh, you could also do it by holding these two needles close to each other, casting on the one, then casting on the other. It still gets tricky because you cast on here and then finish the cast on over here. At any rate, it is a little bit of a tricky cast on when you're doing two at a time like this. In this case, because it's four at a time, uh, once I put this on and I split it, I can't actually cast on the other three. I can cast on the second one, but not the other three. So what I did for this one is I cast them all on all of the stitches at one time. Then I slid them off of the needle onto a needle of the same size and folded them, slid them all back on, folded like this in this position. Okay. Well, like I said, it may seem like it's a little tedious and it is a little tedious, but once you get it going, then it makes perfect sense to you. And so you can actually do it very quickly. So, and I can definitely tell you that the amount of time that you spend doing that, you still save it 
with the knitting four at a time. Okay, so these are a two pairs of mittens. And this is where it gets a little strange. At. Okay, so let me say this. First of all, I am using two center pull balls, which is not something I recommend, especially for beginners, because center pull balls are a little um, testy. Uh, and the big thing is that as you are knitting from them, you have to make sure you have equal tension. So I kind of unwind some because the center is going to have more tension than the outside is. So I usually pull the ball so that they can have equal tension. Secondly, as you knit, you're going to turn the work. And unless you remember to turn back and forth, the ball is going to spiral. So you have to stop every once in a while and untangle the ball. So that, that's a caveat. Now, <clears throat> oh, sorry. When you're knitting two at a well four at a time then you if you are not making four individual balls which I recommend uh, then you also have things that cross even with four individual balls um, and I have one of those art bins where you can put different colors through uh, as if you were doing stranded coloring stranded knitting and keep them separate so keep in, keep that in mind if you are going to do two at a time or four at a time and you have separate balls or you're using a um, center pull, pull ball, uh, a device that separates them like they wouldn't strain at knitting is uh, best. That's the best way to go. Okay, so at any rate, where I'm going with this caveat is um, I discovered that with my two at a time with the center pull balls that I have to finish each of the uh, rows with the yarn on the inside okay so you know how usually when you finish a knitting row you flip the yarn over to the other side and you turn to work well if i do that when i get all the way to the end of the row these are all going to be all crossed up and it'll be a big mess so in order to keep the ball separate and they don't look like they're separate now because i picked them up uh wrong But they're actually separate, and I line them up with the gray in the front. Okay, so they're separate now. The gray's in the front, and all four stay separate from each other. These two are on the outside, and the blues are on the inside. So line like that. And I keep them separate by, at the end of the row, bringing the yarn to the side where I'm working at facing side if I put on the other side when I go to turn they will be all crossed up and I, I have to remember to turn and turn back this way so so far so good now the reason why these are not in color order and I actually only realized it doesn't matter on the pattern I'm working but in most patterns it, it matters when you're making the gusset for the thumb for the um, the mitten in this case. And I want to say this might matter on a sock. It might not. At any rate, there are some patterns that you can make the same gusset on either side. And it doesn't make any difference because they're not handed. And then there are some patterns like the owl knit pattern, which I will show you later when I cast on that the gusset is different for the left side and the right side because the way the gusset works is the the it gives you that kind of um i'm not really sure what to call it but um there is that kind of space at the palm here and um your you know your thumb folds to one direction or the other so instead of having a universal mitten where it's just flat against here and you can put your hand in either one uh, these owl mittens the gusset has more room for this side for the flexing of the thumb on this way and the flexing of the thumb on that way so when you read the pattern you get a left-handed mitten and a right-handed mitten so uh because well i kind of looked at the, the tin can pattern i've never actually made it but i've had it for a very long time and I didn't go all the way up to see if it was handed. I just made my yarn 
to just in case it was. So what I did here is that when I'm knitting four at a time, um, what I would do is I would read the two left-handed mittens, then the two right-handed mittens, and it makes it easier to go left, left, right, right, then left, right, left, right. And that really becomes important because when I finish off the thumb um, with the owl mitt, I have to push the right mitten all the way to the end of the needle, just like you were, if you were knitting. And it's actually out of work while I would finish the, the gusset over here, while I would close the gusset up right here for the thumb because you have to join the front and the back. So you can't really join a front and a back when the uh, work is over here at the end of the loop. So I actually, uh, for the owl mitten, when I join the work here, I actually slide that off. I have that one loop left for the join and I place it onto the back part of the knitting. As I go around, I continue. So for these mittens, depending on how the pattern works out, um, I, I'm going to have to slide these guys off so that I can join the mittens. And the, like I said, depending on how this gusset works, um, what I would just do is I would work it all the way around and there would be one loop left, right? So I would just pull it off and then put all of them back on again and work them to the close. Which, like I said, it's it's a little odd um, and it seems like it would be more work, but it really isn't because when I'm done, I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way up to the gusset ends. Then I'll show you how that looks and um, then I'll go back and show you the cast off. So it all worked out fairly well. Um, I was able to decrease all the way to the top without taking any of them off of the needles. So here is the thumb gusset and everything was on waist yarn. I put them all back on. And I'm going to knit across all the way up to their one and a quarter inches. And then for the decrease, they should decrease, of course, to a point just like this where I'll be able to bind them all off individually as I slide them off the needles. I had already started this one before it occurred to me to uh, film, as usual, record a video. Okay, so I was talking about sliding the cast on off and sliding it back on, which is a thing I had been doing. And... I had mentioned that when you do the long tail cast on, what happens to the first mitten that you're putting on, whatever it is you're knitting to at a time, that's not a sock. You cast on half the stitches on this side, then you leave that alone. Then you cast on all the stitches on one side, split them at, at the end of the loop, and then cast on the other stitches. Well, I wanted to see what would happen if I tried that with all of the stitches where I cast on half, cast on half, cast on half, and then went back and cast on the other half of each of these items. And that works perfectly fine. So for instance, uh, I'm making leg warmers for the American Girl doll, which you'll probably see in a different video. And it called for 32 cast on. So knitting in the round, I would cast on 16. And then I would cast on the other 16 on the other side or I would cast on all 16 and split them between the two sides of the the circular needles so in this case I cast on 16 I let that one alone and I slid it all the way to the front then I cast on the other 16 with uh, the other side of the yarn because in this case I'm using a center pull ball I like to knit from a center pull ball uh, caveat if you have a hard time knitting from both ends of a center pull ball, make two balls. No shame in that game. And then for this third one, of course, is a whole different other color. So I cast on the 16 with this one. Okay, now, so then you would have all of these three lined up in a row. You have to go back to your original. Uh, turn this needle, get it as close to 
this side as possible because that's where you're going to be casting on at and you want to try to make that loop tight so you don't have a lot of extra you know stuff going on over here so then you would do the long tail cast on with the rest of your long tail for the 16 here pick up the next ball remember to try to keep this space as tight as possible holding them together so i was pretty much holding them together and you know kind of working at the tip and sliding it down cast on your 16 take your other ball with the rest of that long tail loop and cast on your 16 and that way you can you can cast them on without um, needing to cast all of them on and then take them off and slide them back on depends on whichever one is easier for you so i'm assuming that as long as i'm willing to manage uh, the balls of yarn i could cast on as many things as i wanted to um that the needle could hold of course like i said with the with the mittens not those mittens with the owl mittens that are from a project years ago that i did and i think there's a, i think i did a video for the owl mittens um, but at any rate there was a point where in order to join the thumbs i had to slide them off work on that one kind of like you would do with a sock you kind of slide it to the end work on that one and come back to it so in that case, that was a little tricky. They had to slide off, come back on. But with the mittens here, I didn't have to do that because I didn't need to join the stitches at all um, because the hole, there's a hole created in the middle of the thumb. And at the end, I would sew that up. There are other mittens where that hole is not created. So you have to join those uh, insides of the thumb gusset so that you don't have to work.